what's up YouTube Sova King Tactical and I got the wrong video started stand by okay let's try again Sofa King Tactical and uh, I got a call the other day your stamp is in you can come pick up your new can this one's been in jail since I don't know February I think I sent the checks and all the new paperwork and everything somewhere around January, middle of January. It's July 31st. I submitted a Form 1 right around the same time, got that back five weeks ago. So right now the Form 1s are running a little ahead of the Form 4s. Anyway, this is the Griffin Armament Optimus Micro. Um, this is the box you get. You get uh, a little, if you get it from Silencer Shop, you get their little hot silencer mitt in the box with it. Um, inside this box, pretty straightforward. You can see in there. There's a little bag and some paper. I never even looked at the paper yet. Paper's got some pictures and some words, mm, some accessories, some stuff, some instructions. It's cool. Bag is weird. And that's the can. And it is micro. It's small. And that's why I ordered it. This is the whole reason I got this was for my SBR PS90 that uh, still waiting for some parts to come back to finish. Um, what's cool about this can is it is a rimfire can. You can see by its size, it's a little fatter and a little shorter than the Taxol Axiom. This is a can for 22s up through the 5.7. Um, I think you can do like a 22 Hornet. Not sure. I don't know. Uh, but I use this on 22s, my FN, things like that. This is a can for 22s and the 5.7. And 5.56. Five, five, and 22.250 is the top end of what this thing can handle. Um, they say it's safe to do a mag dump in 5.56 five, and uh, you just got to be careful with it on the bigger hotter calibers that you don't overheat it. Um, so nice and short to keep the PS90 short now that I've paid the tax stamp to have the barrel shortened and um, should be pretty handy on ARs maybe 17 HMR. I've got a 204 that I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. Um, but this will be a real neat can for 22 and below calibers. If you got a 17 Mach 2, um, if you're still farting around with one of those things. So, let's take it apart, see what's inside. Um, it's got this mount that comes with it. This is the direct thread mount, half by 28. This is for your uh, 22s. Um, well, yeah, just about anything 22, whether it be rim fire or center fire. If you can see, uh, hmm. sorry. Um, those are the baffles inside. There's a lot of, there's, there's almost like a blast chamber from here to here, and then depending on what attachment, what doodad you've bought from them to hook it up. It fits in there. Getting the baffles out. Um, take off this end cap. And then there's like a secondary end cap that actually keeps the baffle stack in place. Like so. Yeah, I guess you can stick a coin in these. Um, to take them out once they get dirty. I don't see any kind of special tool in the box to do it, but that's the idea. 
The apple stack is pretty simple. Five baffles. They are keyed for alignment. Top one. Top one doesn't have a top key. And um, I don't know what kind of baffles these are. They're not K's. They're like hybrid combs. I don't know. But anyway, you key them together, um, stack them up, put them in there. I don't know what they're made out of. They look cool. top one either and I lost it. I guess that's it. I mean, I'll read the book, make sure I did that right before I shoot it. I don't know how easy this thing is going to come apart if it's full of lead. Um, there's some designs out there, like the Axiom here. This is a titanium outer sleeve, or the tube, I should say, the serialized tube is titanium. Inside of here is a stainless sleeve that you punch out with the baffle stack in it. Um, you get almost no lead residue on the actual titanium part and then you can put that whole baffle stack sleeve assembly right into the dip and uh, next day it's clean and you're done. I've never had to clean any other 22 cans so I don't know I don't know how this one cleans, but maybe down the road, uh, I don't know, once we got some rounds through, I'll, I'll do a video on disassembly and see how easy it is. So then you screw that end cap on, doesn't rattle, and then if you're going to go back to the direct thread configuration, you would screw this in. Um, I've got another configuration here. That's their taper mount. And so it screws in here, adds another, I don't know, inch and a half to the can, like so. And then you can you can use any of the, they've got these taper mount muzzle brakes. They've got flash hiders and compensators and single port brakes and double port brakes and all these things. Um, that's how you can adapt it to different rifles and different platforms. There's also a three lug setup where there's like a spring loaded doodad in here, and then you can put a three lug adapter on your Uzi and hook it up to your Uzi that way. Um, hold on one second here, I've got one of their muzzle brakes on one of my ARs that I bought before this came in and got all set up. So I can show you how that works. Okay, so this is a two-port brake. Um, I think they call it a Paladin. I, I don't really remember. Um, and basically, you get some shims, you index this. It's got a little hole facing up. Four holes facing to uh, three and six o'clock for the ports. And then threaded section here, and a tapered section here. This thing. That's it. It's attached, and um, I've never fired a suppressed 5.56. Five, I got no idea what to expect. I have fired 22s and um, the 5.7 suppressed, so I've got an idea there. 
So anyway, next video, we'll get this thing out to the range. Um, I'm only going to have the three hosts to try it on, but we'll give it a shot, see how it sounds, and um, hopefully get it attached to some more hosts down the road. Uh, we'll do the cleaning video, see how it looks there, see how it does or doesn't come apart. So um, if you want to see those videos, subscribe and then ring that bell thing so that you get notifications. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.